Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Feralis Obscure Land. In this game you are playing as an Acer, basically a tribal god that is functioning over one of the four tribes in the game. You're going to be gathering a deck and an Aesir and you're also going to get some divine skills and your objective is to defeat your opponent's Acer. Now in order to do that you're going to have to go through your opponent's defending creatures and or creatures that can block attacks as well as, of course, their divine skills that are utilized. This game functions a little bit like Magic the Gathering, eh, but without mana. You're going to be utilizing something else. It's called an incubation zone or an incubation period, which means that it kind of functions like suspended magic, where every single turn you'll reduce dice in order to get them from their certain pit point to zero, and when that happens, you can utilize or play out the cards. Cards can attack instantaneously against your opponent's Acer, and if you can eliminate their HP from 20 to 0, you are going to win. With a ton of different co co custom combinations, as well as of course four main decks to choose from with their own unique strategies and cards that you can pick, uh, this game loads a ton of strategy and choice, which I'll explain after this setup, how to play, and of course my review, where I will give you into detail what this game is all about. When starting the game for Alice, the simple thing is to go ahead and gather one of the starter decks. Take out the Aesir and place it down in your god location on your board. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and take the rest of the deck and place it adjacent on the left hand side. Based on who your Aesir is, you'll choose your divine skills and the different coordinated types and how many points you can utilize and you'll place each of those skills in the bottom row with a die on it representing the amount of pips needed for it to become active, which is found on the top right corner of the cards. You're then going to go ahead and draw four cards from the deck after you've shuffled it and take your incubation zone and place them just underneath your divine skill cards. You're also going to take a number of catalyst tokens based on your Aesir and place them on the top right hand side of the board and of course your defender tokens, three of them, and place them down below those. Additionally you'll take any of the die and of course your counters and place them aside within easy reach of all players. And once you've done that you're basically ready to go. The gameplay is very simple. There's four different phases. There's the loading phase, the main phase, the attack phase, and then of course the draw phase. During the loading phase, you're basically going to remove a die pip from each of the die that are present on your divine skills and any creatures that are on your loading standees in your loading area, which is a max of four. After you've done that, you're going to move on to your main phase. During your main phase, you are going to be able to take anything that has been reduced to zero and put it from your incubation phase if zone into your main board area, which is the top area of your board. Additionally, if you have a divine skill that has been re 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 um, released, you can basically move that up and remove the die, signifying that you can use it whenever you want except for during the incubation phase. Then you can go ahead and take any one of your cards and choose to place it on either the call or the awakening side. The awakening side is this little jellyfish looking thing, and the call side is going to be this little, I don't know, map marker, and you'll put it down into one of your incubation zones, and you'll take a die, and you will place the die based on the top left of the card, which indicates how many die pips it's needed, or, or rounds is needed, until the card is able to come out onto the field. Followed by that is the attack phase. During the attack phase, you can choose each of your creatures to attack your opponent directly, or one of their creatures. However, if one of their creatures has a defender token on it, you must attack the defending token uh, uh, that is associated with the creature. And when that creature dies, the token does as well, and then once again, you can hit their Aesir and reduce their HP down to 20. Your creatures are gonna each have a unique attack, speed, and health, or constitution. Uh, and how attacking works is pretty simple. I attack the creature, uh, the creature the highest speed attacks first after I assign my creature to a creature that is being defend or that is defending. So for instance, if I had one creature out and I had another creature and then somebody else had a creature out, my creature and their creature would be compared by the stat of speed. And then the person who has the most speed or character that has the most speed is going to attack. The damage is going to be dealt, and then if the creature that uh, was attacked is still alive, they have a counter attack that functions the same way. Uh, there are certain unique functions based on the different types of HP and attack that is associated with the game. For instance, there are three different types of health. There is a purple, there is a red, and then there is a yellow health. And red and purple can only be dealt more than half damage by the exact type of damage that is needed. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty simple how they work. Additionally, there are cards that when they come out, there's going to be unique skill effects that take place with these creatures. When creatures die, if they're on the call side, 
uh, this little uh, map marker side, if they die, they're going to go back to my incubation zone and they're going to go back as the jellyfish, which is the uh, basically the awakened side. And they're gonna have these pips brought back on them. And you're gonna place the pips just like you would normally when placing them out into the main phase. And then they're going to once again come out again uh, when they have uh, finish their pips. Another thing to note too is if you have an awakened creature and you place it out, whether you choose to play it on the main phase or whether it comes from being destroyed on the call phase and being coming back out, uh, whenever it dies on the awakened phase, the creature is going to go into the discard uh, pile. So you're not going to get it back. You can only get it back one time and only if you have been, it has been defeated on the call side, transformed via the incubation into the awakened side. And then of course, when it dies, it goes to the graveyard. And then the last thing is you're going to draw a card. Once you draw a card, your turn is over and it's the next player's turn. Don't forget though, to remember to always remove all one pip from all of the dice. And don't forget to also make sure that you draw a card at the end of your turn and all of your creatures may attack. But that's pretty much the idea of the game. There's some interesting little techniques that you can utilize. I'll talk about some of the game's concepts and what the Defender tokens do, how they work, and the Catalyst as well in my review right now. Okay, so before we get into my full review, I wanna talk about a few more unique things in the game. Uh, for instance, I wanna talk about these catalysts here. These catalysts are what you can use, as long as it is not on the loading phase, to reduce these guys down uh, by flipping them over and breaking them based on the number on the bottom right. You can remove pips from your die. So if you uh, utilize one of your catalysts, on a guy that has a three and that catalyst is a two, then this will go down to a one, helping release the creature and or the divine skill that you appropriately target. Uh, you only have a certain number of catalysts though, so you have to be careful when you utilize them and only one catalyst can be used per card, but you can use them as many as you want. However, you are limited. Once they get cracked, they're out of the game, unless you have a creature that gives you something like a shard one or a shard three, that's going to allow you to bring those catalysts back into play. These are basically reducing the time of the cards that you have in your incubation zone and your divine skill zone to make it easier and quicker to play them. Whenever one of your skills goes to zero, you can instantly play it. And remember, you can use Catalyst at any point as long as it's not the loading phase, which means you can do some interesting combos in the game, such as a creature attacks, you utilize a Catalyst, break through with Balance of Life, and then make each player destroy two creatures on their field. That makes that creature disappear. Uh, you can also do that with the creature as well and as long as it's in the main phase and it gets that creature down to zero pips you can bring that creature out and that is going to allow you to potentially place more than one creature down in a single round which is going to be helpful because creatures that can attack when they come into play except on the first turn of the game the defender tokens defender tokens you only have three of them and when they break they're busted there are certain abilities that do let you get them back if you have them in your deck though but what happens is when a creature of yours comes into play you're going to be able to take this token and place it on that creature the creature is now a defender it may not attack just like if there was a creature with defender in magic the gathering and when that creature dies the token does with it cracking the defender token reducing the amount you have by one and if you have no defender tokens and no creatures as a defender you're going to be able to be attacked directly hitting your Aesir, which is what is going to basically defeat you in the game. Uh, now, there's always going to be a question of what you want to attack and why you want to attack it, and do you want to go straight for the Aesir and let your opponent build up creatures to make it easier to defeat your entire field and thusly start hitting you directly with all of your creatures in incubation, or do you want to specifically target certain creatures? And the choice is really yours. Uh, Feralis has a lot of strategy in it. There's a lot of things you can do in the game and choices you're going to be able to make, and each deck is very, very unique. Like for instance, I'm using Morgal here. Morgal the Destroyer, and Morgal's deck is really, really interesting. It's called, they're like Screels. They're basically like in StarCraft, how you have the Zerg. That's how these guys function. They come out, they make themselves faster in incubation. They're not as strong, but they do swarm. And sometimes when they swarm, they evolve. And when they evolve, they become stronger. And when they die, they come back, and then they make other things quicker to come out as well. They're scarier, more bigger forms. Uh, there, there's a bunch of different types of strategy with the different decks individually, and not only that to speak of, but for instance, Morgal has specific types of divine skills. And you can use these specific types. You have like the Wrath one, and you've got like the, I don't know what they call it, the Defense one. Uh, wrath, 
and uh, enhancement. And this will basically allow you to create stronger uh, attacks and instants and sorcery type things that you would normally see in other TCG style games, but they're gonna be on your board and they're gonna reset, rinse and repeat type of thing. And you can always change these up, making your game play a little bit different. Uh, it tells you how many different types of divine skills you can use and the cost of all of them combined and how you're going to be able to combine those skills and play them on your turn in order to benefit your creatures and of course your Aesir and getting out your things like incubation periods as well as increasing your amount of shards. Whereas uh, my, my wife uh, played Norad and she was able to uh, spring out these huge defenders. They're really strong, really powerful. They're also able to give her additional catalysts back, making her able to start summoning these massive creatures. Yes, they took a long time to come out, but when they did, they hit like a truck and they were able to decimate my creatures. What I really like about this game too is sometimes you're going to come into roadblocks. Roadblocks are creatures you won't be able to defeat, or if you do defeat it, you're going to have to hit creature after creature into it, basically killing your own creatures until you can get rid of this guy. You have to figure out specific types of combos in order to deal with those creatures, and how you're going to do that is kind of up to you. Do you want to build a specifically strong creature that outwits your opponent's other strong creature? Do you want to use a divine skill that's going to be able to do that, or do you want to buff up a creature while playing out a ton of different creatures? Um, or simply ignore it and go straight for the opponent's Aesir, unless of course that creature has a defender token. In which case you'll have to find a unique strategy to deal with it because there are certain types of health and attack damage that make a difference. Certain cards are going to have a certain color of HP and without having uh, a specific type of attack that meets that criteria, you're going to only do half damage to a creature and it's always rounded down. So three damage is always rounded down to one and two is always rounded down to one. And then of course one is to zero, making it very difficult to kill a creature with one health if you only have two damage, if you don't have the matching attack. And that's basically for mainly stronger creatures and more interesting, more unique creatures that require a little bit more finesse in order to defeat. And your board is always constantly changing. You're gonna be using these tokens here, which I wasn't a huge fan of. They're pretty finicky, they're kind of annoying. I'm placing these guys out to increase my three different types of stat. My speed, which determines my attack first, which is basically the most important stat. The attack damage, which is signifies how much damage you need to kill a creature. And then of course, HP. Unlike a lot of TCG games, it's not simply once the creature is hit if there's enough damage it dies it uses basically hp point tokens and you're going to be plusing your health and minusing your health until you hit zero and uh, that can get a little bit finicky at times i didn't really mind the counters as far as speed go and as far as uh, attack go because they're not something that constantly changes as much as hp can um, and you're not plusing it by a lot i would have to go okay plus one plus three then plus four on this thing and it's okay i have to add up these little tokens so that's probably the most finicky bad thing about the game but most of the game is extremely uh, smooth. Uh, being able to incubate your creatures, have a certain amount of incubation zones, being able to bring these creatures out, and then of course when they die, resumming them as awakened creatures is really, really cool. And they both function in the same way, the call mode and the awaken mode, but one is definitely a lot stronger, might have a stronger ability, um, and also beautiful artwork. This game has killer artwork. They did an excellent job with the artwork in this game. All of my guys feel like the Zerg type mm, critters that like mass produce each, you know, each other. They're like, they're, they're evolving, they're changing, and they're becoming stronger, but they're all little skitterers. They can be killed pretty quickly, pretty easily, and they require sacrifice. Uh, this is really, oh here, actually this one does that. When, you, when it comes into play, this creature can be, can sacrifice, you can sacrifice a number of creatures in the field and makes this guy stronger. And the Skreel all have unique uh, abilities to do that. Not only that, but also reducing their value in the game. Other thing too that's pretty cool is you can create your own deck with this game. Game, and there's a symbol in the middle of your card between the call and the awakening side that determines the rarity of the card and how useful it might be for you and uh, there's certain deck building rules as to how many of each of the different types you can have in your deck. Fighting against Callie's deck was actually pretty fun as well. If she'd put out huge defenders, I'd have to find ways around them. I'd start using certain scree Screel to like jump over the defenders with this unique ability that hits their Aesir directly. And then other times I'd have to sacrifice a whole bunch of creatures to destroy and defeat their big defender. And then she's gonna have to find a way to defeat my guy that just killed hers. And so there's always this constant back and forth in the game. It's a very, very balanced game. I never felt like I was losing necessarily or winning necessarily until the very end the very last two turns or so was kind of like, I you know, okay, I think I've got this now. Um, or, or 
And at one point, I thought she had had it as well. The divine call, the divine skills, these things are great. I love the fact that you get to choose your different like stylization and play with what is going to be on your field and making each game feel different, even though you're using the same deck of cards and the same Aesir, this is what really makes the difference in your deck that changes play. Am I going to be using spells that reduce my opponent's uh, monster's HP? Um, or am I going to use spells that buff my own creatures or give me more catalysts, bring back my defense tokens, a draw more cards, make each player sacrifice creatures. There's a ton of different abilities in this game, and overall, it just does an excellent job at being a, a solid LCG slash TCG experience. If you are a fan of Magic the Gathering, and you want something that is kind of a two or four player experience that doesn't involve using mana, this is actually going to be a really high choice, in, in my opinion, because it's very easy to learn, there's not a huge amount of keywords, and after you've played once, you're going to understand the game. Any experienced or even semi-experienced card game player is going to figure out how this game works. The four easy steps, incubation, removing the pips, main phase, bringing the stuff out, putting one card in, and being able to utilize your divine skills. And when you utilize them, they come back, you put your little tokens, your little dice back on them with the pips that represent the number on the top right. Then attack, you attack with each of your creatures on anything you want, defender being the only difference, and then draw a card. Done. Easy to play, easy to understand. Artwork is solid. Quality of the game is excellent. I love the board choices. I love being able to have all the different spaces here. I don't really understand necessarily why the top space is, is has a little space down below it and moves up and back down. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the tokens. I thought the tokens were a little bit tacky. They didn't function exactly well. Don't get me wrong, this game is excellent. There's a ton of different skill combinations. The fact that you can deck build is excellent. The fact that each deck feels unique to one another and plays differently is excellent as well. And this is going to be something that TCG players, LCG players, card game players are going to jump on if they just get enough reach. If, they, if, this, if, this, if these guys can get enough people to take a look at this game and understand the gameplay of it, they're going to see how fluid it is and how fun it is. And of all the other TCG, LCG, Kickstarter games I have seen in quite some time. This one was the easiest to play, easiest to understand, and each rule book I have seen, I see the second one and the first print, I have the one that they sent me here, and then the new one, the new one is even better, even more explained, uh, and I think they're going to do really well. Uh, I like pretty much everything about this game, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Feralis Obscure Land, the core set. If you're interested in picking this up, there's a little link down below in the description. This game is going to be on Kickstarter, or is, or was, depending on when you watch this video. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the subscribe bell button notifications, so that way you can see more of our videos. Each week, Monday through Friday, we put out content like this. And then, of course, on Sundays, we do our live streams, where we play games just like this one from 6.30 p.m. PST until we finish. We give away games there. We have our Discord, we have our Patreon. If you'd like to donate to us and support us there, go ahead. Unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to utilizing my divine skills on you next time.